Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today this is a voice recording to make an animation that people asked. Uh, it's essentially inspired from an animation uh, After Effects tutorial in which uh, people open a door from a wall. So let's start. So here we in Blender, let's go to the node and create an object and a geometry node tree. As always, I'm going to use the preset which you can download that for free from the link in the description. Let's start with a curve linear. Uh, it feels like a 80% of my tutorial is actually to start with a curve linear, but this is a really important node. Well, it's kind of very simple. It's just a subdivided curve line because in curve line, you only have a solid and at the end, you cannot control the count. Okay. And I'm going to set the type into the step. The step mode is not really a new concept because you can find exactly the same concept within this mesh line. Uh, as you can see with the offset and the end points. Basically, it means that right now I have a line Okay, a single line, but within this single line, I have about 10 vertices in total. And from vertices to vertices, the distance is about 0 0.26. Okay, so this is not really new. Next, what uh, we need to do is just to instance this stuff for several times. Okay, so let's instance this curve linear and instead of on the z-axis, so I'm going to turn this into the y-axis. Okay, and I'm going to instance again but instead of or on Z or Y axis, I'm going to instance on X axis. So every time you just change this kind of value of this integral so that you can switch on the X, Y, Z. Okay. So finally, we generated this kind of grid like a structure. Next, the thing is just to curve to mesh with the curve linear so that we have this kind of a plate being generated. I'm going to turn this to Y axis so that it feels like a kind of a door structure. Okay. So this is very good. Here, I want you to understand the relationship between all these kinds of parameters. Here, if I disable the first instancing on points, then I only have a single row of these plates, which will form our doors, okay? And if we go to the wireframe node, then you can see this kind of a structure, right? And because we're trying to curve to mesh using this curve linear, which actually means that if you decrease the count, then you can see there is a less subdivision being generated, but we also decrease its less because we're using the step mode. So if we increase the count, then it will just increase more numbers at the end of every line. Okay. I'm going to use the stop instead, and then let's increase these values. So that uh, if you decrease the count, you're actually changing the subdivision. That's the characteristic of a stop mode. Uh, again, as I've mentioned before, this is basically the same concept of when you are using the offsets or the end points. The stop is the end points, okay? Another subdivision, as you can see, this kind of vertical row is actually determined by this curve linear yeah, on the x-axis. So in this case, I'm also going to use the stop mode because if you are using the step mode, then if you are decreasing the count, then you're also decreasing the length. It actually does not really matter, but I'm going to use the stop so that you can directly change all this kind of length. And I'm going to set the count into two so that only there is no subdivision. It's very light. Okay. Another important thing I want to remind you is that if I turn up this row again, here I want you to understand the relationship between these values. As you can see, it's controlling the y-axis and that value, which is controlling on the z-axis. Technically speaking, I do not want any kind of gaps between these kind of doors. Okay, so you want to make sure this is step. So let's use a value. Let's turn this to 0 0.2. And that value of curve linear, which determines how wide or how long each plate is is actually being synchronized so that no matter how you actually change the values, these are all related to each other or so that there is no gap. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is to increase the thickness of this kind of a door. Right now, there is a, it's just a kind of plain. If you just change the perspective, you do not see the wall or door at all. Okay. So we are trying to use the extrude mesh in order to actually uh, increasing the thickness of everything. And here you may realize a characteristic that by changing this scale, we would like to have no gap between these kind of doors. So actually this turns to be another value node, 
which actually determines how far on the y-axis and how thick the door is. Okay. Uh, so we just uh, connect a value to the value and the value to the offset scales so that no matter how you actually change these kind of values, there is no gap in between. Okay. So finally, this is kind of a procedural setup that you can turn these kind of values to decide how large your door is. Okay. Uh, you may not like these kind of uh, shadings, so that you can use a set shader smooth and disable the shader smooth. Okay. If you want to um, bevel these entire doors, since we do not have any kind of bevel node, so you have to do this using external modifier. And even if you use the external modifier, you find that it's not working at all. The reason is that whatever we are outputting are instances. So we do not have access to its um, vertices. So you have to realize the instance at the end so that you can actually bevel that. Okay. But this is just the final thing that you may want to polish your scene in this case, uh, currently I will disable that so that we are working with a more lighter version within this tutorial. Here we're basically finishing one side of doors, but I would like to have a kind of a mirror image on the other side. Okay, so to do the mirror image, it's kind of very straightforward, uh, in which you just use a join geometry. Okay, so and uh, let's transform it with a scale of negative one so that we always get a mirror image. If you change one side, the other side will be reflected. So what you mean is that if I decrease these values on the x-axis, then you can see the door becomes uh, uh, less wide. Okay. So this is basically the parameter control that you can work with. Okay. So after finishing all this, uh, what we're trying to do here is trying to move these leaflets on the other side. And because the the left side is being mirrored, so it will move to the other side. Okay. To move them, uh, basically it's just uh, to set the position and then move these kind of doors. So as you can see, by setting the positions, controlling the x-axis, then we have this kind of movement. Okay. Here I want to have a kind of a differentiation of these x-axis movement. So the easiest way to do is to use the a delay fall in which you can plug into the combine XYZ and finally goes into the offset. Immediately there is not many changes, but if you try to play this animation, you can see there is actually kind of a delay. The delay is being operated based on the index. So it's just actually an index node. So the first, the first one, which you start with index zero will have an earlier animation. But the last one, which is index nine, because we only have 10 in total, will be animated at last. And you can increase this kind of differentiation by increasing this step interval, okay? Another parameter is this duration. This duration is determines how many frames it takes for fall goes from zero to one, okay? Which actually means that if you're increasing this duration, it means this animation becomes uh, much longer or slower. Okay. Here, I will just keep that to 25, but I guess in reality, you want to keep that a little bit more, okay? So this is basically the concept, but there are two kinds of problem. One is that there's no randomization. So it's everything is in order, the second thing is there is no differentiation from row to row. Okay. So there, one way to do is that you need to realize instance. So that instead of working with ten instances, we're instancing. Uh, we're working with ten splines. The difference between ten instances and ten splines is for splines there are different vertices for us to work with. So that once you realize the instance, as you can see, there's different rows. Are being differentiated differently as well. Okay. So this is kind of very important and you can play this animation you can see how it starts to open the door. Okay. Uh, you can definitely switch the relationship between x and y so that you can actually see this effect in a kind of a nicer way. But uh, again we still have the problem that, that there is no randomization from this kind of plate movement. They always animate from the button to top. Okay. 
to solve our problem, it's actually kind of very easy that uh, we're just trying to manipulate this custom index, which is setting at the core of this delay fault. So what I'm trying to do right now is to capture an index. And an index is an integer. So let's switch to the integer and using this index. So with our captured index, let's plug that into the custom index. So right now we have this kind of animation, uh, which is actually differentiation on the y-axis, but not on this z-axis. Right now you may actually realize that isn't this just the same as doing without this realized instance, because it's using the default index for every instances. It looks completely the same. But uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have the access to every this kind of z-axis so that I can use a random value and then plug that to delay. And by increasing this maximum, you can see there's a differentiation on this z-axis. If I do not realize the instance, then this effect will not be done because we only create a random value for these 10 instances instead of about 100 points. Okay, so this is the reason. So right now we basically finish this animation. At the end, it's basically just uh, trying to dealing with all these kind of parameters, how many frames or how many durations you would like to do or how many step interval you would like to control. If you're increasing the step interval to be a lot, then you can actually see there's a huge delay from layer to layer. Okay, so trying to play around with kind of parameters and finally you can get your kind of result very nicely. Okay. So right now we have basically finished this kind of door opening animation, but we haven't really finished this tutorial because I would like to address the making of UV. Although this UV problem has been mentioned in the past, but uh, I just want to remind you again, because there is another way to resolve that. It's also kind of complicated. Uh, it's possible that you make a very procedural setup, but uh, I try to make this kind of as simple as possible because this is rather, how should I say, rather basic things that the two work with. So I'm just uh, trying to use kind of a cheat sheet method in which you just uh, create this kind of bounding box like. Let's increase this to y axis as much as possible because this cube is going to be used as a boolean. Uh, in which we're, we need actually a grid to function as a wall and we can try to transform it on the x-axis and increase the size. So now we have this kind of a wall but we need to be boolean by this cube. Uh, one thing that this wall is has no thickness so we need to use a solidify modifier but if you directly use this extrude mesh node then it does not fill the back face. Okay. And you can definitely have tons of method to deal with this kind of back face things. But uh, one easiest way I think is just to use the preset which is called solidify. And let's decrease the mid level. And by increase the offset scale we finally get this kind of stuff. Okay. And I'm going to take a mesh boolean. And take the cube back to the node tree. And the boolean with the mesh. So now I no longer need this cube. I can just disable that. Finally, I have this kind of door and the wall. You may want to try to manipulate this kind of parameter so that it feels like these are the single wall. And you can see that from both sides. So let's increase the solidify a little bit more. Okay. And then now if I try to play this animation, then you can see how it goes. And then we do have a kind of a shading issues because of Z fighting. So in this case, just trying to tweak these values a little bit more, so it will finish as good as possible. Okay, so now we have a wall and we have this kind of door being opened with our animation, which is, looks kind of very cool, so that we can actually discuss the shading issues about this wall's UV. To make a UV for this entire wall so that you can put an image texture onto that, you need to basically duplicate a mesh and let's rename this object as UV. And we need to tweak something within the node tree. I think it was a bug to apply the 
geometry node tree so that you have to realize the instance so that you can actually apply the node tree. So right now we have applied node tree. This looks like a single mesh that you can actually manipulate, right? And I'm going to go with into the cameras and I'm going to turn on this also graphic view. And uh, let's just uh, move the viewport. As you can see, there is a hole because this is uh, the wall. It's not very easy to see in this view, but anyway. Okay, and what I'm going to do is to select this entire mesh and uh, project from view. Let's add a material and go to the shaders. Previously, I've already made, or actually I've already imported a image texture, which is actually a Blender logo. So now if we look at the material preview model, you can see this is what's going on. And we can actually try to change this scale and move this Blender logo away. I do not want to have a repeat, so let's just clip that. So it's uh, nicely setting in the middle. But if I try to play this uh, timeline, you can see there is no animation because there is no geometry nodes inside. Okay. What we are going to do is we are going to transfer this UV to our plane uh, within the node tree. So let's go back to the noding. Uh, let's go, let's turn off this UV because we no longer need that. Uh, we may need this uh, actually object info and then we can start to hide that. Okay. So to transfer UV, there is a preset which is called UV transfer, but as I've mentioned in the past, this preset is completely useless because it does not really simplify anything what you're trying to do. So we're not really going to use these presets, but rather this preset is kind of a good reminder about what we need to do. One is the UV map is actually a vector. So we need to use a vector and I'm going to turn on this index. As you can see the custom index, so let's plug the geometry into the source and I need actually group input to take a UV map. So let's go to plane, modifier panels, take on UV map. Uh, most of the time it's called UV map. You can confirm all this kind of UV map, uh, UV map naming based on what's going on with this spreadsheet. You can see there is a UV map and a UV map. Usually the default is the UV map. So you just use the larger one. Okay. And let's plug these attributes, which is actually our UV. But there is also one problem that you need to realize this UV needs to be in face corner. So it, we take a UV from face corner and we output UV in face corner as well. Okay. So right now, if I go to the material preview node, it's completely white because we do not have a material. So we always need to add the materials using the geometry node tree. And let's add a new. Uh, actually, uh, let's just uh, use the material we created and create a copy of that. So this is material 001. Okay. The reason it's not working is because if I go to the shading and it's using a UV, using the texture coordinates, but as I've explained in the past, the geometry node does not recognize this new UV. So let's name that as a new UV. The name does not really matter, you can name whatever you want, but the whole point is that you have to take this UV using the attribute node. So right now you can see this is what's going on. So right now we start with this kind of a plane, and if you play this timeline, we have this animation. And it works pretty well. Uh, there is only one issue that I realized is that uh, you actually, uh, it's not very easy to see. Mm. It's not very easy to see, but uh, basically what I need to do is I may want to increase the maximum a little bit so that you can see that this kind of a door should actually disappear after the door completely opens. So, so this is basically the idea. And uh, finally, it's just about kind of tweaking all these kind of values so that the door does not really disappear. I also feel like this is a, probably a little bit of bug that these kind of gaps, but I do not want to investigate this for now. Because if you just look at also graphic view, you probably do not really realize these kind of issues. But anyway, um, I think this is it. I probably will just stop here and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Can I actually add a merge by distance? No, it does not really help. I do not know why. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.